I play Michael Logan, who's a, a detective sergeant on the drug squad, the task force. And uh, he has his own crew, obviously, and his crew are a very tight crew. They're very loyal to them, you know, amongst themselves. Um, but they are corrupt as they come, and they feel they are untouchable. They feel that um, no one can, can break them um, because they, they abuse their badge. They abuse the privilege of their badge um, by dealing with criminals um, to the point where they become criminals themselves, you know, where the lines are quite blurred. And hy hyena um, is obviously a metaphor for nocturnal animals, as Gerald might have pointed out to you, and um, they hunt in packs at night, and that's, that's the kind of metaphor for the, for the, uh, the title. Um, Michael uh, gets himself deeper and deeper into this situation with uh, these Albanian um, uh, drug traffickers, um, human traffickers, and uh, he does this very dodgy deal and it spirals out of control. And he starts taking more and more chances, more and more risks, and things just <sighs> that doesn't look too good for him by the end of the film. So it's quite an intense ride. The original inspiration was from somebody, me and the main actor met uh, socially uh, a number of years ago, and you know we met him socially, and it was only from from knowing him for a, for a while longer that we realised he was an undercover policeman. He wasn't necessarily investigating us, but he was when he would leave us, say on a night out, he would go to work, you know, he was quite a party animal. So there was a lot of elements that seeped into when I, when I wrote the, the film. But then I met a lot of other corrupt policemen, so it became a, a, a mixture of different characters. You always take, you know, bits from here, bits from there. So it's not really anything like that original guy anymore because it morphs so much, if you know what I mean. That was the inspiration for Hyena. So. Um, when it yeah, come to actually uh, portraying Michael and developing the role, it's very important that we uh, do as much research as possible um, to shadow the police, which we managed to do. We couldn't do it in London because there's so much red tape. We were lucky enough to come into contact uh, with some, some, some people who, who were involved in corruption, yes. Um, and obviously uh, we not only went out and spent time with corrupt policemen, we also spent time with un corrupt straight policemen who were very helpful because I wanted what I wanted to do obviously is to show that you know there is corruption but they're also very good at their job and the the police that we did go out on they obviously were not corrupt and from that we got a real understanding of actually the good police work. I think it does make you think about people that are in a position, position of power where they abuse abuse that power, and we know we see that every day. Whether it's in politics, where anyone that's in a high-powered job, where they feel they can do as they please, um, um, it does go on. I don't think cor corruption is as probably as as uh, potent as it once was. I mean, it, it used to be pretty bad in in the UK during the 80s and 90s. I mean, hopefully there are issues there that that should uh, we should talk about. Say, for instance, the trafficking thing. In a way, it, it's not gone away. It's, it, the, the statistics show that it's even more prevalent in the UK. Now, people could say, well, we know about it. We, you know, we've seen it. We've seen Louis Forever. We know what goes on. But do we really know that it's, it's happening right underneath our noses on, you know, in, 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 and in, in big cities like, like London, for instance? Um, what goes on? In any little street is what's fascinating to me, what goes on behind those closed doors.